This is TLC Live, and we are hosting Envision Conference 2019. Dreamers, seers, and designers, we are so happy to have you here today. Wow, on behalf of our senior leader and co-founder, Apostle Buddy Crum, and our founder, Dr. Mary Crum, we just welcome you to tonight. We are just so excited. We are in day two. Day one was awesome. Mm -hmm. It was just a, a powerful move of God that occurred in the service on last yes, night, yes, even in the yes. service on this morning. And it was just really awesome because it wasn't just um, something spiritual, but it was a lot of practical application yes, and teaching, yes, yes. as well as the revelation and the insight from Apostle Jane Hammond mm -hmm. and even her husband. Apostle Tom Hammond just really helped with that and it was just an exciting move of God that occurred in that service. They are such a mighty team together, yes, aren't they? they? Are. they just tag team in the spirit. I know, I loved it. I loved it. So we had Apostle Jane last night, yes. Apostle Jane Hammond and we had her this morning. Yes. And then in our afternoon session we had our own prophet Pat Fraley yes. who activated everyone who was a part of that session. She stretched them prophetically and gave them an opportunity to experience hearing the voice of God for themselves. Yes, that was a powerful move as well. Well, and tonight it is on and popping. Yep, I'm telling my age, but it's on and popping tonight because we have we have uh, Dr. James Gall, who has an awesome book that's all about the seer anointing. So if you mm -hmm. haven't read that, I encourage you to get it. It's called The Seer. He has a new book out that's also called The Discerner. Mm -hmm. So we know that tonight he is going to just uh, delve into the Word of God. We are going to get all kinds of wisdom and insight and revelation yes. from him. And he is just so unpredictable. You don't ever know what James Gall is going to do in a service. So don't be surprised if he breaks out in song. He might sing the song of the Lord. He might dance. <laughs> You might have a heavenly move. Oh, right now. So I'm excited about what the Lord's going to do tonight. That is so exciting. Well, listen, I know he's going to be here tonight, and he'll be back tomorrow morning, right? He'll be back in the morning. Okay, and then we have, listen, I had to, I was rushing it along because I wanted to tell. I have one of the speakers for this conference here hosting with me, Dr. Hope Edie. Okay, so is, she's going to rock. She's going to rock. Um, she's going to um, do the noon session, and it's called The Seer. Mm -hmm. Now, I said to her today, as we were talking about hosting TLC Live right now, I said to her, um, so you're time of ministry is called the seer and then she just went in now I'm not gonna let her preach to you guys because she started preaching not to yet, me not yet not yet <laughs> you gotta tune in tomorrow at noon but I do want her to tell share what she's going to share a little bit so what we're going to talk about on tomorrow afternoon is we're going to be talking about the warfare that seers experience mm -hmm. um, and we're going to delve into that things that they battle like fear um, where they battle demonic attacks wow. we're going to talk about how they can counter those mm -hmm. um, how they can really um, clarify their, their visions and their dreams and know how to really utilize that to effectively war against the enemy so that they're not operating from a place of defense, but they're actually operating from a place of offense and wow. success um, and really combating the works of the enemy. Yes, yes. I cannot wait for that. I got my pen and pad ready to take notes. And wait a minute, you can also receive that. Now, if you're not registered, you can't tune in to the noon session, right? right. So you have to be registered to tune in to the morning and noon session. So guess what? If you're not registered online, you're going to miss Dr. Hope Edie. <laughs> so you want to make sure you're registered online. But the free is free at night, all the sessions at night. So, mm -hmm. you know, but you still can register online. Also, all right, so after Dr. Hope Edie, we don't stop there. We keep the train rolling. Mm -hmm. We have Dr. Sandy Freed, who is very experienced in ministry, particularly in the area of dreams. So she's going to talk mm -hmm. a lot about dream interpretation. Oh, wow. How do you decode the language of heaven so that you can not only um, capture your dreams, but really understand and oh, have that wow. revelation of what the Lord is saying to you in it. So she's going to be very insightful, um, very revelatory. So we definitely encourage you to tune into her sessions as well. Is that also uh, not just... Uh, interpreting your own dreams but, but interpreting even the dreams of others yes, yes yes i love that i love that okay so and then we have uh one more day after thursday so we're in day two and there are four days so on friday we kick it back off with dr sandy freed again mm -hmm. right yes so she'll come back and remember you got to be registered online to watch that session if you're not in the local area but if you're in the local area come on 
Come on, <laughs> jump in the car and come on. I know the Atlanta traffic, but you have time and you can make it. So we want you to come join us, all right? And so we have Dr. Sandy Freed, the AM. And then in the new, at the noon session, we have our very own. Our very own Prophet Catherine Sykes. She serves as our Director of Ministries here mm -hmm. at the Life Center. Um, she is one who is very gifted in the area of miracles and signs and healings. And she's going to minister a throne room experience on um, her Friday session. So that is an, uh, an encounter that you really want to be in the house and be in the room for because you're, there's going to be a downpouring of the Spirit of God that people oh, wow. are going to be able to experience. So we definitely invite you to come out to that. Session. So I, you know, I like that title. I like that title. I want to understand it just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Throne room encounter. What, mm -hmm. what is that? Where experience? she's really going to create an environment and an atmosphere that we can get into the very presence of Ooh. God, that we can mm. go before His throne. Mm. Um, I, I'm sure there will be a lot of visions that will occur during yeah. that session. There will yeah. be downloads, and then even some interpretation oh of visions that will come out of that. So definitely invite you all to be a part of that experience. Okay. Now you have to be registered to be a part of that mm -hmm. experience, but we have. Have coming back even in the afternoon well in the evening, evening. session we have Dr. Dr. Sandy Freed again mm -hmm. yes Wow. So we are looking forward to what she's going to do. Um, her having those three times with us, we just know that Lord is just going to yes. build upon mm -hmm. each time. So we're just expecting a great move of God from her on tomorrow, and it's just going to continue to build throughout the conference. Oh, that is so exciting. Listen, we are TLC Live. We do a pre-show for the conference. Anytime we're doing a conference, and this conference we haven't done in a while. Mm -hmm. Wait, do, do you know last time we did this? It probably would have been about two years ago because I think the they kind of... Oh, changed the name a little bit, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's a part of the ministry crew. <laughs> so we changed the name a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. Okay. Well, listen, let me um, tell you a little bit about what else you're expecting to see here. So we're going to do some interview. We're going to interview some guests here uh, shortly and find out what they're expecting. They're coming here and people are arriving because we go live at 730. And don't worry, because I know we get all the comments about don't make us miss worship. We're not going to allow you to miss worship. So we're going to talk until 730. Once worship starts, we're going in. We want to be in the presence of God, too. We want to be in the worship. So we're not going to let you miss it. So stop texting. Stop texting us those messages. And so that will happen at 730. But we're going to talk to a couple of our guests that are coming in and ask them, uh, why they're here, what they're expecting, because people come from all over for this experience. And we're so excited to have them. And so they come here to have an encounter. And we spoke with some people last night that were talking about they have dreams and they have visions and they really don't really understand it. And so we're hoping that those that come and they need understanding, they leave with understanding. They understand uh, how to interpret their own dreams as well as um, other dreams. And this is, sometimes this is, um, for people, it can be a little uh, different for them. We've had people come in, well, I don't really know. I don't really understand. Well, then there will be teaching this weekend to help you understand, to, to explain exactly what it is, why you're having them, because God is still the same. He's still speaking through dreams. He's, um, so we need just understanding and wisdom to interpret those dreams. and. We have a wonderful list of speakers who, um, this is one area that they focus on, the uh, area of dreams and seers and discerners. So we're excited. We are excited. We're expecting a mighty move of God. I'm not going to call you out that you just left me standing up here talking. <laughs> I would just keep going, but I was like, where is she going? <laughs> Somebody tell her to come back. Okay, so I'm glad you're back. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're going to have fun tonight. I mean, we're excited about being here. We're excited that you have tuned in. Mm -hmm. And we hope that you are even online on social media. If you're watching us via our live streaming, Facebook, Periscope, uh, how, what other ways? We, we, we're everywhere mm -hmm. out there. You can watch us. However you're watching us, please give us feedback, comment. Don't talk about us. No, <laughs> not us. I'm saying give feedback on the service. <laughs> Be nice to us, okay? Be nice to us. All right, so what do you think? What are your thoughts? 
You're excited, I know. I'm excited. The wonderful thing about this is the uh, the anointing. It is transferable. So even if you aren't here in person, that does not mean that you're not going to get a download on tonight, that you're not going to have a divine encounter and experience yes. with the Lord, even on your couch, on your sofa, in your car, wherever it is that you're joining us from. So we want you to just raise your, your expectation, mm -hmm. put your bucket out, expect the Lord to meet you where you are and mm -hmm. have an encounter and an experience with him, particularly if you are one who is a dreamer, a seer, yes. or a discerner. Just know that you're going to get the tools that you need, but you're also going to have an encounter with the Lord on today. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so excited. Well, listen, I promised you we would talk to someone, so I see someone standing in the wait over there. So come on in. We have a visitor. Come join us. Hello, hello. <laughs> All right, hello. So what is your name? A Dalton Akinbade. Okay, so Dalton, where are you from? Uh, Jefferson, Georgia. Jefferson, Georgia. So tell us, what are you expecting tonight? Oh, some impartation. <laughs> I would like to see the heaven open Amen. and to see the throne room with my two eyes. So. Amen. Is this your first conference here at the Life Center? Oh, no. This will be about the third. Oh, you're family now. <laughs> so, look, you're family now. <laughs> well, we're so glad that you uh, joined us. Are you here by yourself? Uh, no, I have two sisters that's uh, going to come join me shortly. Oh, okay. Right, so they're coming back tonight. Oh, wonderful. So the whole family's coming. Uh, uh, one of them was one of my Ignite, uh, uh, you know, co-student, I would say. Uh -huh. So we met here at Ignite back in October. Wow, I love that. Okay, so you're a friend to us. All right, well, we're excited about that. And thank you so much, because I know they just walk around and pull people, come talk in front of the camera. <laughs> so thank you for being bold enough. And I, we are standing in agreement that you receive what you're exactly expecting what you're tonight. Expecting. I mean, we're having fun here, but we are standing in agreement that heaven's open and you receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you and bless you. Thank you. You guys at home, come on in and get some. You, I promise you, you will receive. Amen. That's Amen. what I'm talking about. That was a commercial right there, okay? Make sure you cut that media. We're going to use that as commercial. I mean, you know, first of all, I must say that I received the uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit here, uh, speaking in tongues in September when I came for the Apostolic Conference. Mm -hmm. uh, this past September? Uh, this past September, yes. Oh, wow. And then, um, so I didn't even plan to come to Ignite for the prophetic training. Uh, but some way, somehow, after that, I, I learned about it. Mm -hmm. I came. Uh, a week later, the Lord asked me to retire from nursing after 22, 23 years. So uh, there's a lot to get here. I, I mean, the Lord is just accelerating my life as a result of coming in here and gaining a lot of impartation. Amen. Uh, yeah. Amen. Well, we are so happy. And thank you for sharing that with us. Bless you. All right. Well, thank you, Dalton. All right. So listen, you heard him. If you can get here you need to jump in the car right now and come on down because you can make it. You can make it. We're going to be in worship for a little while because, you know, we have to set the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And then we'll jump right into the word. So you have time to get here if you're in the local area. If not, just make sure that you stay connected right here mm -hmm. online. All right? Wow, can wow. you believe what Dalton was saying? That's an awesome testimony. He got the spirit filled in a Life Center conference mm -hmm. and he came back and did our week long Ignite prophetic training. So, just an awesome example of what the Lord is doing here at the Life mm -hmm. Center, what He's doing in the midst of our trainings, our prophetic schools, our conferences. So, we definitely invite you to come out not only to this conference, but to join us for our, our apostolic and prophetic conference that's going to occur in September, as well as our ongoing trainings. We are truly committed to equipping and preparing the saints to be used by. God. I know. I, that really blessed me because we hear those testimonies mm -hmm. all the time about people coming here mm -hmm. and this is the first time they receive, you know, they uh, received the impartation, changed their mm -hmm. lives. They left here not really knowing what was the next move and then from there on they knew each step God started to show them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just amazing the encounters that people have when exactly. they come here. So we're an anointed place. That's all we're saying. We're saying <laughs> God is here. Amen. Amen. All right. So listen, we have uh, another interview and now they're kicking me off camera. So <laughs> I'm not going to be a part of this interview because I'm getting kicked off camera. But before I go, come on in. <laughs> Hello. We're so happy to have you. Hi. And what's your name? Susan McBride. Susan, where are you from? Um, I'm a native of Atlanta, but right now I live in Decula. Mm -hmm. So what did you come here to the conference expecting to receive? Impartation for seeing, 
uh, in, in a greater measure. Mm -hmm. I do get dreams. I don't know what they mean. Okay. And so I would like more impartation <laughs> on the interpretation uh -huh. and also just being able to uh, open up my senses to hear more. Um, to be able to prophetically speak into the body. Right now, I'm an artist and I like to draw, so he's starting to move me into that, like, okay, now draw prophetically. Mm -hmm. And that for that, I need to be able to hear and see. Okay. So I want an increase. Oh, great. So now, you, were you with us in service on last night? Yes. Okay. So what was the key nugget takeaway that you got from the service on last night? Um, Gosh, there was it was really all very good. Um, she said a few things that impacted me. Now it's leaving me, but uh, there was there was um, a, an activation that I thought was very good, um, and I felt the spirit of the Lord here. I felt that um, the prayers for us were very impactful, and I felt like I did receive an impartation. So that was pretty cool. The and also, I got a dream last night. Amen. Okay, so, you, so your gifts are being stirred up, right? You're here. Great. And the activation that she did, the one about really walking in your authority and decreeing some things over over the person that you were with. Great. Well, thank you so much for being with us on tonight. We just know that God is going to bless you, continue to bless you while you're here. All right. Thank you so much. I bless you. So again, just an example of what people are experiencing here at the conference where See, their gifts are being stirred up. <laughs> okay. You didn't need me. They're being taken to another level and we're just excited about what the Lord is doing. You did that interview and that rocked. I wanted to be a part of that, but she didn't need me. <laughs> I'm her co-host. You know that, right? No, you <laughs> I'm your Vanna White. <laughs> <laughs> she is that. So listen, we're so excited about this conference. We just miss doing it. What was it called last time? It was just called um, the Dreams and Visions Conference. Oh, it sure was. Mm -hmm. That's yep. right. And that's why I couldn't put it together. Yeah, we changed it because now it's dreamers, seers, and, and discerners. discerners. Yeah. So yes. come on, you guys. Come right on in. Now, listen, we have, um, what if I just start grabbing people as they're coming through the door and say, come over here and interview. <laughs> they probably take off running. Okay. And they probably wouldn't let me host again. So I'll pass on that. Listen, so we have coming up Dr. James Call tonight. Mm -hmm. And what do we know the theme of what he's teaching on tonight? I believe he's going to be teaching on discernment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Great. Because he actually has a new book that's out. That's right. That's his new book. It's about discernment. Title. Yes. And the last one was called The Seer. It was this year, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. Where's, uh, what's his background? Um, Dr. Gall has been in ministry for a number of years. He's a part of the Wagner Leadership Institute. That's he right. is also affiliated with Christian International. In addition to the book about the seer and the one about the discerner, he also has a book um, that's about the lifestyle of a prophet. Oh, so wow. even if you feel like I you're like prophetically that. gifted or you have that inclination, that's also an, another good resource to get as well. Oh, wow. I yeah. like that. Yeah. The lifestyle of a prophet. The lifestyle of a prophet. I like that. And, and that's an actual prophet. Because, you know, there's the office mm -hmm. and then there's the, the gift. gift. Mm -hmm. There's the spirit of prophecy. And we're experiencing all of those here this week. So <laughs> <laughs> we invite you to come on, jump in with us with that jump in the river and have that experience with the Lord of all the different facets and forms of the yes, prophetic. Yes, yes. I love that. And that's what we are known mostly is to be a prophetic house. Mm -hmm. I love that. And most people come here for that. I know we do. Um, just so you know, if you're new to us, we have classes. Mm -hmm. And, um, okay, Dr. Hope, I know your title. Of course I know. But I can't really think of it right now. I just know it's education. <laughs> So I'm actually the director of our education and training department, which That's includes right. um, our Christian education courses for our adults all the way down to our little ones in our nursery, but it also includes our, our uh, ministry schools, including our prophetic schools. We are in the process of working on some apostolic schools, so that's going to be Yay. some things coming there as we're so moving and launching out more into training on the apostolic. Um, we have healing and deliverance trainings. Uh, we have power evangelism trainings. So we have a... a Whatever area of the fivefold ministry that you're called to, we can train and equip you here at the Life Center. Okay, so I know we're talking about the prophetic and miracles, and but she trains the staff as well. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is true. <laughs> all the training here. And we're just so blessed, you know, to have you as a part of this ministry. You've been here for a while. I, June will make eight years that I've been here at the oh, Life wow. Center. Yep. Okay, and it has been an awesome experience. I have learned a lot while I've been here, had a lot of really great experiences and encounters with the Lord and just seeing not only myself, but a lot of other people grow and be expanded and be mm -hmm. launched forward in the things of God. So it's been a really fruitful time. Oh, praise God. And I just want to remind you of the schedule. You can go on the website and find that information. It's lifecenter.org. Because I don't know if you're watching us via Facebook or Periscope or another way. But just so you know, our website is lifecenter.org. And on there, you can learn about our classes and things that are upcoming. And we have, most of the time, and I say most of the time, we have two conferences per year. Mm -hmm. We have... Um, one in the spring and one in the fall. Right. Now the fall is the major conference and that one is the Prophets and Apostles Conference, mm -hmm. we call it PAC. And so that's happening in September. Now you can go online and find out about that. And that's our largest conference. It is big. I think we're into like 29, 28, 29 years. Yeah, they've been doing we're, it for almost yeah, 30 years. Yeah, we're up there. And so you, if you didn't join this one, then you definitely want to come and be a part of that. No matter where you are, go ahead and get your tickets now. Look online, find out the dates, uh, and get your tickets because it's right after Labor Day weekend. And so then come and join that one. And we have for that upcoming conference, we have some hitters for yes. that one as well mm -hmm. so we have um dr matthew stevenson mm -hmm. he's been with us quite a few times but i'm telling you it never gets old he no, brings never. it every time <laughs> every time so we go to school it's mm -hmm. like theology school we go to theology school but it is awesome and the presence of the lord is here mm -hmm. so you don't want to miss that and we have also uh bishop bill hammond who yes. is a founder in the prophetic movement yes. has awesome materials on that he is the founder of christian international which we are affiliated with mm -hmm. and so he will be here to teach to train to impart um he loves to lay hands on the saints mm -hmm. and just stir them up to the next level to so activate, to activate them so here. we are we excited activate. about him being here as well <laughs> we, we love to activate here talk about that because i we have people even calling the office sometimes asking about activation can you really activate mm -hmm. a person into the prophetic like yes. can you really do that so, Share with you most certainly can do that. We know that all of the gifts of the Spirit operate by faith. So really That's all you're doing with activating is you're allowing people to utilize their faith, right? To, to believe God, to be able to hear his voice and then give them an opportunity to launch out into that. So Dr. Mary, our founder, is a firm believer in activating. She yes. says that she has been anointed to activate the saints. So we thank God for who she is and that anointing that she has that resides here and has even been brought up and trained up in others and imparted to others that she's mentored, that we can activate people into those gifts and give them an opportunity to not just hear about it, but to experience it for themselves. Okay, I started to run when you start talking about it's a matter of faith. Because that really is what it is. It is. And you're uh -huh. just helping people increase, increase their, their faith. faith. And I just love that. Oh, mm -hmm. my gosh. Okay, so listen, we have this other young lady standing, waiting in the wings to be interviewed. So we're going to call her up right now. Uh, come on and join us. Look at that pretty face. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm a hugger, so I'm going to touch you. Okay, good. <laughs> We are so happy to have you. What is your name? Tammy. Tammy. Where are you from, Tammy? Cumming, Georgia. Cumming. So you're right up the street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, in theory, it should be. <laughs> but with the Atlanta traffic, it was a high gone. Yes. <laughs> okay. Tammy, tell us. But it was worth it. Have you been here? Um, were you here yesterday? Yes. And it was worth it? Yes. Oh, I love that smile. Look at that. She's like, yes, I'm sure. Have you been here before? Never. Really? How did you hear about us? My friend, Deborah Brownlee, told me about this church. Really? Yes, several months ago. And she's been coming here for years. Yes. And I know the name. So <laughs> she, she and I just met several months ago. And she's like, you got to come. And I said, well, tell me about it. And when she started telling me what was what what was about, and I said, "Game on, I'm there." <laughs> I like her. <laughs> okay. Um, she was speaking my language. She was speaking your language. <laughs> I love that. And so, what are you expecting this weekend? Well, 
I have a lot of dreams. And when she started talking about dream interpretation, meaning my friend Deborah, that got my attention. So... Because, you know, you have them and you feel like you know there's a message in them, right? Oh, there definitely is. Yeah. There definitely is. Mm-hmm. And God wakes me up many times mm-hmm. during the 3 o'clock hour. And he gives me something to do. <laughs> and sometimes he won't let me go back to sleep until I do it. Yeah. Dr. Hope's over there testifying to that. She yes. That experience. <laughs> Um, For a long time, I thought it was just me. And then I realized, wait a minute, he does that with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So not just waking me up and talking to me, but I see things in my dreams as well. Yeah. So you're going to leave here this weekend being able to interpret those, not only your own, but those of others, right? That's, that's what we're standing on. That's where your faith is. All right, so Dr. Hope, we're connecting with that faith. Come on. We're connecting with, with that it. faith. Come on. Bless we're me. connecting with it, and we just believe that the Lord is not only going to meet your expectations yeah. on this weekend, but he's going to exceed them. Yes. And that while you are here, not only will that gift of dream interpretation be stirred up, but that you will have encounters with him that will give you wisdom and revelation that you yes. need, even for decisions that you are trying to make, and even for where you're going, even in this next season, that God is going to download you his strategies for the next three, five, ten, and even 15 years, yeah. that hey. this will be a life-changing experience for you, and that when at the end of this conference, you will know that you have been thrust forward into a new realm and a new place with the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Thank you for coming over. (laughs) All right. Tammy. (laughs) Now that was an interview, huh? (laughs) Look, Dr. Hope likes how I put her on the spot. Release some of that anointing on her, Dr. Hope. (laughs) So listen, we are so excited that you have joined in with us today. And I'm telling you, you are going to be blessed and we hope that you register for the daytime sessions. Yes, we yes. still have those going on. Uh, we have Thursday and Friday. Okay. So you have four mm-hmm. more sessions. And remember, Dr. Hope is one of those day sessions. So that anointing will be live in there. So you want to make sure on Thursday a.m., Dr. James Gall will be back with us. Mm-hmm. And that's... Uh, I would say more of a teaching time. The morning sessions are more of a teaching. Well, really what we experienced even on this morning, there was teaching that went on, but then there was a serious a impartation. There was a move of God that mm-hmm. took place even in yeah, that yeah. service as well. And and we've been experiencing awesome worship even so far throughout it the conference, sure even from yes. our Life Center Praise and Worship mm-hmm. team with the, the move that started even last mm-hmm. night where we've been experiencing prophetic singing and mm-hmm. just them ushering in the presence of the Lord. So just the entire conference as a whole has just been just an, a sweet time mm-hmm. with the Lord and we just know that it's going to continue and even grow as the days go forward. I agree. I agree. Listen, and then we have, after Dr. James Gall, we have uh, your session, Mm -hmm. and then we have Dr. Sandy Freed, who's with us for three sessions? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so she'll be here tomorrow night. And then on Friday, don't forget, Dr. Sandy Freed again that morning. Mm -hmm. So she'll do some more teaching, more impartation. And I love how... um, you put those together, not just a time of teaching, but a mighty move of God, even in the worship experience. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. But I will tell you, now, I, I might be a little bit biased, but <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit biased. But the worship in this house. Mm-hmm. Is amazing. Yes, it is. It really is. I, w- I would definitely agree with you there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really believe it's because our praise team yields themselves mm-hmm. to, they want to create the atmosphere for whatever mm-hmm. it is the Lord wants mm-hmm. to accomplish. And they have been doing that even mm-hmm. throughout this conference, even in the session this morning. So we're just expecting them to do that again, even mm-hmm. on tonight. So definitely dive in f- mm-hmm. feet first into the worship, mm-hmm. even that's going on, because it's creating the environment and the mm-hmm. atmosphere for what the Lord wants to accomplish. That's true. And I, I think also a lot of that is because they pray together Mm -hmm. they prepare together they even um take the classes and Mm -hmm. so forth yes so that they're prepared to pour out what is needed during Mm -hmm. that time so i love that about our worship team so that is um the am session dr sammy free and then the noon is our very own now this woman of God is the director of ministry, so she is over conferences and Mm -hmm. things like that the um she oversees the, well, she doesn't, 
She's a director of ministry, so all of those ministries, prophetic and so forth, flow right. under and her leadership. And even the teams that serve. And the teams leadership. that serve flow under her leadership. Mm -hmm. And she's been in that role for uh, a while, but she's a mighty woman of God, Prophet Catherine Sykes. And so she will be here at the noon session for a throne encounter. Yes. Yeah, I love that title. And then we'll be back in the afternoon with Dr. Sandy Freed. So we, listen, she really has something for us if she's coming for three sessions. <laughs> she's yeah. full and she's gonna pour out. Yes, she will. To be here for three sessions, mm -hmm. we usually have people come for two max. Yeah. And for her to be here at three sessions, she really is going to pour out. So you don't want to miss it. No. You want don't want to be like, well, I'm just going to catch her on the in the evening. You want to make sure you catch her in the morning and in the evening. Mm -hmm. So we have a powerful lineup for this weekend. We're excited about what's going forth. It ends on Friday night, though. Yes, Sandy it does Free end Friday will close night. it out. Uh, normally we go Saturdays, but this year Sandy Free will close it out on Friday night, so we know. Mm -hmm. Listen, I just want to talk to those that are in Atlanta, around <laughs> Atlanta, uh, anywhere near us that you can get here mm -hmm. on Friday night. You want to be here. You want to. You here. want to be here. Yep. That's not hype. You you want to be here. I uh, recall um, one time <laughs> we said that um, on uh, live, and then. Um, Dr. Matthew Stevenson was teaching. Mm -hmm. And we had encouraged people to come and to get here and be here. And people came. Mm -hmm. I mean, they really came. And when the power of God started to move one of the women, after she said, I knew it. I knew you were talking to me. <laughs> I had to be here. I had to be here. And for me, that mm -hmm. was just, that was an emotional was moment it? for me because that was for her. We that were talking her. to her. Exactly. And she knew we were talking to her. Mm -hmm. We didn't know her name, but she recognized that that was the spirit of the Lord calling mm -hmm. her to come and sit in there. Because mm -hmm. to be in the presence of it right. is amazing. It's amazing. And it's, it's, you may get hands laid on you, you may get prophesied over, but even if you don't, just even being in that environment, there's such a tangible presence of the Lord that you leave out change, you leave out transform, you leave out with a deposit that you can then take back and implement in your own life and even in your family life. Yes. So it is very important to be in that environment. And if you can't be here physically, then definitely we want you tuning in online right. because the anointing still transfers oh, even yes, over does. social media, oh, yes, even over the internet. And you you can oh, yes, still get that residue. You can still get a, a mm -hmm. part of that encounter. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And be mindful. At the end of the service, we will come back to you at the very end and close it out and talk about talk a little bit about what we received. But hopefully, we'll have an opportunity to talk to Dr. James Gall at the end of the service. We don't know because we don't know how things will move in there. <laughs> so we don't know if we will, but we know we will be back mm -hmm. to actually close out the service with, um, it'll be us or it'll be one of us talking to mm -hmm. him. But we don't want you to leave us at the end of the service. Just stay tuned and we'll come back and close it out and hopefully with an interview with him. I do know that we're going to try to do some interviews with Dr. Sandy Free since okay. she's here yes. during that time, but we're not sure about... Um, Dr. James Gall, and we're not sure what night we'll be able to do the interviews with Dr. Sandy Free, just because we don't know how, how the, the Lord Holy is Spirit move. will move. You know, <laughs> we, we talked to him and said, can you tell us so we can plan stuff properly? <laughs> that didn't work. Because <laughs> we don't want to box him in. We want everything that he has for us, and we want That's him to right. give it to us the That's way he right. wants us That's to That's right. We want all of it. And we want to have all of it. That's why we do it live. We're um, on Facebook. Check us out. We're, and if you're not um, a friend of ours on Facebook, please become a friend of ours. Mm -hmm. We're on YouTube. If you don't subscribe to our play page, please do. Um, it's Life Center Atlanta. Just mm -hmm. remember Atlanta. Life Center Atlanta. We're on Twitter, so follow us there. Mm -hmm. And as well as Instagram. So yes. listen, we got all the bases covered. So you can connect with us. And even on Periscope, you can watch us mm -hmm. live on Periscope. So we have social media covered. And we do that so we can connect with you. Although you may not live here and attend the church, but you may be connected to us from a distance and we want you to be able to connect with us so however it is please make sure that you connect and stay connected now remember i'm just going to remind you because they're going to shut us down in just a few minutes so i want to remind you thursday we have the morning session with dr james gall the noon session myself dr hofiti <laughs> look i had to let her call her own name 
<laughs> and then we have the evening session with Dr. Sandy Free. So that's Thursday. And then on Friday, we have the morning session with Dr. Sandy Free. The noon session with Prophet Catherine Sykes. And the evening session. We're going to close out with Dr. Sandy Free. So make sure you tune in and watch us and um, subscribe. And so now we're preparing to go into the sanctuary because we hear that worship is starting. And so we're preparing to go into the sanctuary. And just remember that we will be back. It probably won't be us, you know, because <laughs> Dr. Hope will be resting up for what she needs to do tomorrow. Amen. Or laid out in the spirit somewhere. Okay, I'll lay it out in the spirit, yeah. <laughs> she was laid out last night. <laughs> I was like, I want to talk to you. <laughs> okay, maybe when she gets up off the floor, I'll talk to her. <laughs> so we're thinking tomorrow there'll be somebody else hosting this. Mm -hmm. But just remember, stay tuned. Tune in after each of these. And we will try to get interviews in if we can. And if we can't, we still will come back to you and let you know we can't get the interviews in. So we just won't leave you out there hanging. But listen, worship is starting in the inside and they're over there doing all these finger movements saying round it up so dr hope you want to um give them a final word i just want to challenge you on tonight to expect god to meet you where you are expect to have an encounter with him even online and that you're going to get those nuggets that revelation and insight that you need that is going to give you the wisdom for your coming season Amen. See, mighty woman of God. <laughs> All right. So we thank you again for joining us um, here. This is TLC Live. This is Dr. Hope Edie. I am Tiffany Hall. And we are so grateful that you joined us tonight. Now we're going to join in on the worship so you can go in and get in the presence of the living God. Again, thank you for tuning in and God bless you. God bless you to you as well so we're excited to have you with us all right well let's stand and we're going to pray and then we're going to enter into some awesome worship amen amen with our awesome team <laughs> amen all right thank you jesus thank you holy spirit thank you jesus Father, we thank you for your presence in this place tonight. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in our midst. We thank you, Father, for the seer gift being released in new measure, for new lenses being put on. I thank you, God, for there being a release of your anointing, of your power. Father, we pray that tonight as we enter into praise and worship, Father, we ask that you enter in and we open the doors of our hearts and we say, come in, Holy Spirit. Spirit, transform us, change us into more and more of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Let us see heaven on earth. Let us see what you are doing in your throne room. Father, we thank you for all that has occurred, but we thank you for all that is coming. Father, we stand in agreement right now and we take authority over every assignment of witchcraft, every occultic spirit, every psychic spirit, every religious spirit. We take authority over you now. We bind you in the name of Jesus. We draw the bloodline of Jesus Christ around this sanctuary.
Lord and the Spirit of the Lord says, have I not opened a door before you and extended an invitation tonight? For surely do you not discern it? Do you not see what is before you? For I am calling you in to the room of the future. I am calling you in to see what is to come. For the Lord says, I will reveal it and I show you that which is coming that you might not only be prepared but you would be an influence for the Lord says it's time for you to see beyond and I am pro horizoning you to see beyond the horizon line says the Lord so open your eyes says God allow me to sharpen your spirit tonight allow me to sharpen your ears hear what I am saying surely show you those things that you have asked and requested of me for you are my very own says the Lord hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you father father we just thank you for this time now let's just reach up and say Lord I receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Come on, let's pray in the spirit. Come on. Divine deposits are being made. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. It's time for upgrade. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, praise and worship team. It's awesome. Thank you for leading us in tonight. That was wonderful. Don't you appreciate the praise and worship team? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You may be seated. We have a lot going on here at Life Center, and we want to welcome our visitors. If this is your first time uh, at Life Center, would you raise your hand, please? Okay. All right. Well, we welcome you. We are so glad you are with us. And later on, when we receive the evening offering, there will be uh, an opportunity for you to take the visitor's card that is in the seat pocket in front of you. And if you will fill that out to give us a record of your visit, uh, we will, uh, and also put any prayer requests on the back. We'd love to pray with you and keep you informed of events going on here at Life Center. So there's a lot going on, so if you will take your attention to the announcements, and I'll be right back. You were composed. You have a story. You have a story. You have a purpose. This is what this you is are. What you are. This is what this God is what did you with, you. with you. He made, made you. you. Oh yeah, yeah. I was, I made, was made for more. For more. School of Miracles, taught by Elder Catherine Sykes. Believe with expectancy to see the supernatural manifestation of God's anointing. This power is for you. Come attend this power-packed, interactive, introductory school 
and have your faith turbocharged to see miracles flow whenever a need is present. Topics covered. God's will to heal. The kingdom of God and miracles. Prayer protocol for miracles. Operating in God's miracle working power. Creative miracles. Miracles activation and demonstration. For more information, visit lifecenter.org. Jesus. Well, now it is my pleasure to introduce our evening speaker tonight. He really doesn't need an introduction to most of us, Dr. James Gall. But for those of you who are not, but yeah, no, please stand. Let's give honor where honor is due. But for those of you who are not familiar with him, He's the president of God Encounters Ministries, and he's founded numerous ministries, including Prayer Storm, and many of you would be familiar with Women on the Front Lines, which he had started with his wife, uh, Michael, uh, a number of years ago. He's a member of the Harvest International Ministries Apostolic Team, and on the leadership team, at, or an instructor at Wagner Leadership Institute. He has traveled over to 50 nations and has uh, been imparting prophetic ministry, the power of intercession, and he is a, a very uh, precise, teacher and he helps to lay foundations in areas of revelation uh, that God has given him as an apostolic prophet. Uh, he has written books. Uh, he has a new book out called The Discerner. We are so excited to hear more about that. He has written The Seer, Dream Language, The Lost Art of Intercession, The Coming Israel Awakening, Finding Hope, and The Lifestyle of a Prophet. Uh, he works relationally with leaders across the nations and linking them together. And his heart is to make sure that Jesus receives his full reward. 
Amen. And his reward is seeing us built up, equipped, and operating the way that, that he ordained for the church to arise in power and in anointing. But more than anything, he has a love for the Lord. He has a love for Christ, and he has a love for his people. And so he's going to impart to us tonight uh, a lot of that wisdom and revelation. So I want you to open your heart, be ready to receive what God has for you because I, I just really feel there's going to be a lot of wisdom released tonight regarding the discerner. So would you give a warm Atlanta welcome to Dr. James Gall. Okay. Thank you. It's great to be back in your house which I've not been here for a few years, but uh, I tell people about, if you want some life in Atlanta, I know a place where there's some life, okay? So I'm actually, um, while I'm prophetic, I'm actually also very uh, systematic or left brain oriented, if you understand right left brain issues. And so what I want to do is, I have about five things I want to do with you this evening. And so it's a good thing that it's only about 6.20, you know? So that way I can go to midnight, okay? Oh. By the way, if you can't laugh, oh, go home. No, I mean, excuse me. You didn't hear me say that, did you? Okay, all right. So, hey, I am um, just gonna introduce some of my product to you first. and. And, um, and we'll see how far I get in that. So yes, I'm a writer and author, and there's a, The Seer. How many of you have ever read uh, The Seer book? Hey, thank you. There's a, an edition that's out there that has the 40-day devotional journal uh, that has been added to it. And then also there's Dream Language. And I read over 110 books on dreams and I studied dreams for over 30 years before I ever started teaching on it. And that is one of the primary ways that the Lord speaks to me, is, is actually is through dreams. So those are two kind of modern day classics that's out there, the seer and then dream language. But I also have some of my newer uh, materials. This has just come out. I only have two of the writings in it but I, I am paired with people like Smith Wigglesworth, uh, Derek Prince, John G. Lake, uh, let's see, Mariah Woodworth Etter, Andrew Murray, uh, Miles Monroe, John Wesley, uh, Marilyn Hickey, uh, let's see, and Bill Johnson and uh, Apostle Maldonado from out of uh, Miami. And so this is uh, hot off the press, it's Tongues of Fire, 50 days of celebrating Pentecost. So it's a devotion. And it's just like, what God? I mean, it's like, what an amazing honor to get to be a part of people of major Tory, you know? And it says, and Marilyn Hickey already said that, and a few other modern day, uh, Joshua Mills and some others. And so this has just come out, but it's to help just do a day, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, read, a, read a devotion, a day. And it's to help prepare us to believe for the fullness of Pentecost in our own lives. And so this is uh, brand new. This is, uh, these are both brand new out at the same time. This is Strike the Mark, Powerfully Targeted Prayers for Victory and Breakthrough. And um, this is out there on the table now. And I have some of the best endorsements with this book than any that I have ever put out. And so Mike Bickle from the International House of Prayer in Kansas City has done an amazing, wonderful uh, foreword for this. This comes from out of the theme verse in Job chapter 36, 32. I'd love to teach on this with you, but I am, uh, uh, have been given an assignment to do the discerner with you, which we're gonna have a bang up job. It's gonna just be great. But this is, comes from Job chapter 36, verse 32. He covers his hands with glory 
or another translation says, he covers his hands with the lightning and he sends it to strike the mark. And so I had that in a dream. I didn't know this verse of the Bible existed, though I had read my job description a few times. <laughs> and I had a dream of lightning bolt after lightning bolt after lightning bolt come down. That's all it was, was a dream of incessant lightning presence that was breaking up darkness from heaven down to earth, lightning bolts. After that, I wake up out of almost feeling like I got struck by one. And in the bedroom, in the seer realm that Jane Hammond helped uh, unpack for you some, I'm known more in the, as a seer than I am a Naba, a prophet. And, and so I saw that written out in front of my eyes, great big, huge amber letters, and it said, Job, 3632. And I'm looking at, I'm, I mean, for 20 minutes, I sat in the manifested, tangible presence of destiny, looking at these words, J-O-B 3632. And after sitting for 20 minutes in that presence, I turned on the light, my Bible was on the bedstand, and I read, Job 36, 32, for the first time, under understanding, under the spirit of revelation, under the spirit of, of understanding and knowing. And it speaks and it says, he covers his hands with lightning. He sends it forth to strike the mark. Now, God knows his Bible. <laughs> and he proved it to me that night because I have a dream of lightning bolts and I see a verse with a job description from a joke. And here's the, the short version is this. He covers his hands with glorious lightning. He sends it forth to Pagah is the Hebrew word, strike the mark. That one Hebrew word in the English language is transliterated into eight different phrases. One of them is strike the mark. One is to create a meeting. One is to bring parties in opposition together for reconciliation. Another is to like uh, to be moved upon by the Holy Spirit so as to move you from the natural realm to the supernatural. The one of the phrases that the Hebrew word pagal is translated the most is the word intercession. Lightning covers his hands. He sends it forth to crash, to strike the mark. So then I went on a journey of, of working with that one verse. And it works like this, the way I understand it. God in his sovereignty has given man a great gift called a free will. He sovereignly chose that he wanted to invite man as a part of the process of salvation and his presence from heaven coming on earth. He covers his hands in heaven, God the Father, Jesus Christ, their hands are covered with the glorious manifested presence of heaven. They're covered with light. They're covered with glory. But they also, because God has chosen us to be his partners, he is looking for believers who will paint targets that are called invitations in prayer for the glory that is on his hands to have a target to strike the mark. Because he doesn't want to just send his like, just like splash, oh, let's try it over here. No, we're co-laborers, so he gives us the privilege and we get to paint the targets through a pagal, through prayer that then invites the glorious intrusion of God's Holy Ghost to strike the mark. Well, that's what, that's what this is about, okay? Jonathan, would you give these to whosoever, and I'm going to try, I'm not guaranteeing, I'm going to try, 
to do a book signing at the uh, close uh, this evening. I will definitely tomorrow around noon. Some other new product because I actually have three new books. There is the discerner that I will be sharing from this evening and tomorrow. There is also Praying of God's Heart that came out just this last November. It is the new rendition of the prophetic intercessor. So this is on the power and the passion of prophetic intercession, praying with God's heart. So we each progress, we each learn, and I keep learning. Even if I have a specialty, I keep learning in the specialty. And if I'm a general practitioner, I can still hone my gifts, I can still hone my skills to grow in all realms and yet have a specialty. And so what this is, this is an audio book. This one though is in a MP3 format. So this is my voice reading the, the entire, hello, this is James Gall. <laughs> How many of you want to not just pray to God, but pray with God? I thought that was pretty good. Okay. If you want me to throw it down Johnny Cash style, I can do that too. That ring of fire, that ring of fire. So this is the audio version of Praying of God's Heart in an MP3 format. So this is a CD, but if you put this thing in your car, you ain't gonna hear much. This has gotta be downloaded, okay? Now, here's old school, just out, my first time to even see it. I also have just recorded my voice. My, my voice. The discerner from top to bottom in CD. Now this is the $35 value. And oh God, I gotta give it away. Okay, here Jonathan, they get to, they get to like, uh, okay, there you go, Jonathan. Okay, hello. And there's plenty out there. And there is also a free music CD. I don't remember how many, it's for like the first 35, I think it is. I think it's the free item. I give away things. And so I have, I have recorded professional music in the last two and a half years. I was a singer before I was ever a preacher. And that's a long time. I've been preaching, teaching, sharing for 45 years full time. And so I was a singer before I was a preacher. And so I've been on a journey of rediscovering life after tragedy. What? Yes. Ten and a half years ago, my wife went to be with the Lord. A year after she graduated, I got struck with cancer a third time that I was had to fight for my life and I went this is not the uh, Nashville uh, sob song from country music by the way um, my dog uh, 14 years that lived in our bedroom decided to kick the bucket and I went three hundred thousand dollars in medical debt and I was somebody who had never missed one bill in my lifetime and so all of a sudden, I was a single dad. And I, by the way, I'm not taking um, resumes <laughs> while I'm here. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, <laughs> ha! Okay. Uh, okay. So get back. Get back on track, dude. Okay. Okay. Hi. Uh, okay. Hi. See, I have the ministry of sanity. You, I didn't get introduced correctly. I have the ministry of sanity. I make the rest of you feel sane. <laughs> you didn't get that. Oh, well. So anyway, I was a singer before I was ever a preacher. And in my journey of trying to like, I never missed a beat in God in that sense. I never walked away with God. I never got ticked at God. I never got mad at God. Although I did get in his face a few times. Okay. 
but I've gone on an intentional journey of what brings life to me. In him I live and breathe and have my being. It's always been that way. It will always be that way. But there are also things that bring life to you. And I went on a journey, very intentional for two years, and I, did, I just looked at my life. And I said, okay, God, why am I still here? I almost died four times. Why do you keep me here on a leash? No, that was part of it. But part of it is, okay, God, it's like I'm trying to inch closer to him right now. See, it's what I'm doing. Okay, now, um, see, some of you just, you just got sanity. <laughs> I know this is not the James Gall comedy hour. I can tell because you're not laughing. Okay. <laughs> but so I really went on a journey to rediscover how to laugh. Okay how to smile, how to have a spring in my step, how to catch the little foxes of downward spiral and learn to catch it and rebuild an upward spiral. And a lot of that deals with healing. It deals with mental healing, emotional healing, inner healing. It deals with salvation. It deals with finding life. And so here's what happened. I was at a Women on the Front Lines conference. I was one of the only men that was there. <laughs> I have been to all 20 years of all of those conferences, by the way. The only person who's been to all 20 years, maybe 21. And I was tired of it all. I was tired of all the estrogen in the room. <laughs> ah, floating all over the place. You, you, okay. And I was like, God, wrong guy, wrong place, wrong message. Now, I'd already given it to Patricia King, okay, and she's been leading it now for several years, but I still would be honored to speak. And so Heidi Baker was there, and Heidi's on the floor, and she's singing her little sweet lullaby songs. I mean, Heidi, we love you, I love you, I love you. This is not like a, it's just the truth. And she's just like having a devotional time with God in front of everybody, okay? And I'm like pretending like I'm soaking. Do you know what that word means? That means where you're just kind of hanging out and it's called waiting on the Lord in the Bible language. Today we use, we call it soaking. So I was actually high with the repuse in this large church in Phoenix and I was hiding under the front row. I was pretending like I was soaking. And I'm telling God while I'm under the front row, this is actually a great story. I, just, I have to get this out of me tonight. I don't know why. It's just like, it's just oozing out of me. It's like, tell them, tell them really the real truth. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, no, I don't know. I don't know if you really want to hear it or not. Oh, oh, oh. You too can have a goof, I mean, uh, a Holy Ghost, uh, hilarious anointing. Okay. So anyway, I literally was lying on the floor. I wanted out. I was just telling God, I hope that this is like an illusionist act and there's a floor with, you know, an open place and can I just escape for a while? And how many of you know when you play hide, God plays seek? <laughs> and I'm hiding and God found me. And he whispers to me and he goes, I want you to sing. And I go, yeah, I know, I've sung all my life. He says, I want you to sing. And I go, yeah, I know, I've sung all my life. He goes, no, I want you to record. And I go, oh. Because that was a dream of mine in growing up. And he says, I want you to record music. He said, not worship music. I go, now you really had my attention. And it literally goes like this. He said, I want you to record music. I want you to record Music the world knows. Because he said, I want to put an anointing on your voice that not just the church world could know and receive, but that the world, 
could benefit from my anointing. So he told me to do professional recording and I have sung all my life, but I had not sung properly for over 40 years. So I give him a deal. <laughs> he said, yo boy, uh-huh. I mean, <laughs> do you, I, yes, I talk, I talk to God, hallowed art thou most reverend high. Yes, I do. And then I go, hey, hey you. Okay. Oh, please, right, don't you? Am I with the right people or not? Like I, I got to get my story going, but I got to know that my bridge is built with you so I can carry the cargo. So I'm going to get down here with you. Okay, so I'm down there and the Holy, Spirit, the Holy Ghost says to me, I want you to sing. I go, yeah, yeah, sure. So he says, I want you to record to go and worship music, but world, music that the world knows. Okay, so I gave him a deal and I said, okay, if this is you, three things. I said, if it's you, I need a confirmation. That's the Bible. I said, I need a confirmation. I said, second thing is, I need Jack. Jack. You know, Jack means money. I need Jack. Come on. Do I have to teach you guys lingo? What's up? I mean, God knows my lingo. Did you know God knows your lingo? Yes. Do you know God speaks like you talk? Yes. Yo, uh huh. Okay, that's another one. I don't know what zone I'm in tonight, but it's like, oh, God have mercy on me and on you at the same time. Okay. So I said, I need confirmation. I need Jack. That's literally what I said. And that meant, this sounds like it could cost a lot of money. I need some help. The third thing I told him was this. If I'm going to do this, I'm only going to... This sounds arrogant. <laughs> I said, if I'm going to do this, I'm only going to do this with the best. Do you think that bothered him? He loved the dare. He loved the dare. So, a year later, nothing happened. But I'm at a prophetic conference at a son in the faith of mine named Matt Sorger. Matt's been here, I think. He's a son in the faith of mine, and he's sitting with me and my youngest daughter, etc. And he spots off, and he goes, oh, I hear you singing. I hear you recording. And he goes, and it's not worship music. It's like Broadway. Wow. And I'm going like, yo, boy, keep going. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Yo, 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 your daddy listened to it. <laughs> what I'm doing. Oh, God. I've never quite told it this colorful before. So anyway, so I have my confirmation. I'm then ministering in Singapore five years ago right now. Afterwards, the top Singaporean airline pilot and his wife, who are dear friends, came up to me, give me an envelope, and they said this. This is not for your ministry. This is a gift for you to do with to do a secret that is in your heart. And I go, yo, I wonder if Jack is in there. <laughs> yo. <laughs> but I acted coy. And then later I looked and I was like, uh, it was the largest gift I had. Jack, Jack was big. <laughs> and when I saw those zeros, I went, I think this could pay for the whole thing. And then I have a daughter-in-law that's a professional classical pianist and classical violinist. So I picked cover music and I made my own arrangements and I practiced for six months. And then I had an, an official audition with a man who has won 17 Grammys, 30 dubs and four tellies as a producer. 100 million downloads of music and etc. and I literally did an audition. I didn't do the best, but God spoke. And so here is the second cut from Never Alone, if we get it right. <laughs> what the world needs now is love. Do you have that? Where are you? Where's, 
Oh, there. Is it back here? Do you have that? Okay, let's put her on. Maybe I'll sing somewhere over the rainbow. No. Do we have it? There we go. You're going to need to turn it up more. Turn it up. What the world? We'll try. Can you recue it, maybe? Can you recue it? Okay, I don't know. So, because it's layered, is there some way that I can only have? There we go. Thank you. Now you got to turn it back up. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. And back up some more. What the world needs now is love, sweet. That there's just two in love. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but for everyone. Lord, we don't need another mountain. There are mountains and hillsides enough to climb. There are oceans and rivers Enough to cross, enough to last Till the end of time What the world needs now Is love, sweet love It's the only thing that is just true For some, but for everyone Lord, we don't need another meadow There are cornfields and wheat fields Enough to grow There are sunbeams and moonbeams Enough to shine Oh, listen Throw in some little jazz here. What the world needs now is love, love, love. What the world needs now is love, love, love. What the world needs now is love, love, love.
Thank you. Seriously, thank you. Yeah, I think the Lord has wanted me to do this. It took me two years to do this. The vocal trainer had to deassemble me for a year and then took a year to reassemble me. And I'm not in any close of the league of the people at all that they normally work with. But my vocal coach trainer for two years ended up being the vocal trainer of Lauren Daigle, Natalie Grant, Danny Gokey, and some of the top also in the world singers today. So when I told God, I said, I need a confirmation, I need Jack. And I also want to do it with the best. God answered the desires of my heart. And I believe I did this at 65, I'm be 67 in this July. I believe that the Lord wanted me to do this to be a model of stretching people. Because in my spiritual growing up, we were more limited, you're a one thing pony. You know, you're a pastor, you're a pastor. If you're marketplace, you're marketplace. If you're government, you're government. If you're a prophet, you're not a teacher. Not for sure. But the Lord has helped us in this last 20 years or so to help to redefine some understandings, even in the prophetic, where it can be a pastoral prophet, it can be a teaching prophet, it can be a prophetic evangelist, it can be a apostolic teacher that carries a prophetic gift and perhaps is actually the combination becomes an apostle. Or how about we take an, and you understand this in this culture, a typhonated, oh, I see, you're a prophet to the marketplace, you're equipped and trained in the church, but you've become a sent one. Oh, oh, really? So I feel like the partially, the Lord has forced me into this journey to rediscover life for myself. And it absolutely brings life to me to sing. It just flat out does. It brings forth that creator in me in another prophetic realm of the arts and media. But also, I feel like that I went on this journey to help it say to some of you, you don't have to be stuck. You've got more than one talent. And guess what? You have more than one gift too. And I feel like the part of what I'm walking out is to be a role model that you can change even later in life and your dreams in your latter years can be even more fulfilled than in your early years. Okay? So, I'm gonna get to the discerner. Yes, I am. S tell somebody, yes he, is. yes, he is. But before we do that, I want to take us to a bridge set of scriptures. And I'm actually gonna prepare right now to receive the evening offering and then I will go into the primary message. If you have, I would like for you to look in your Bible in Acts chapter 10 about Cornelius. And this set of passage in the scriptures is actually tied to a lot of the subject matter of this conference, which I in way is open heavens. It's the seer, it's the discerner, and it is the dreamer. And, and perhaps other descriptive terms. Here in Acts chapter 10, we're giving a template about open heavens. How many of you believe there is such a thing as open heavens? How many of you want to experience open heavens? How many of you want an open heaven over your life? Well, let's look at some of the keys in scripture. And I have done a massive amount of historical revival research on revivals and awakenings, outpourings of the Spirit, and also in history and in the Word, etc., like many of you. But I found a little piece here that is rarely ever talked about, and, um, and sometimes we approach this subject inappropriately and we use it as manipulation. If you do this, you're gonna get that. And it leads and can lead into trinket baiting people, and I'm not into that. 
I'm not into false wrong manipulation. I'm not at all. But I am into inspiring and educating and informing and creating a proper culture because I found in this scripture another one of the keys to open heavens. Cornelius's vision, Acts chapter 10. There was a man at Caesarea named Cornelius. He was in the Italian cohort. That means he was in the mafia. Okay, that dude, he's like, yo, okay, anyway, moving on. He was a devout man, one who feared God with all of his household. Now look what it says that he did. Yeshua Jesus has not yet been revealed to this man, but he says he's a devout man. It says he feared God and his whole household, so he was also a good father, a husband and a good father, because all of his household follows him. And then it says this, and he gave many alms. Hmm, interesting. And it says he gave many alms to the Jewish people. That's, again, a very intriguing element. And it says, and he prayed to God continually. Man, I, I, when I get to heaven, I want to meet this guy, Cornelius. Then look in verse 3. About the ninth hour of the day, he clearly saw in a vision. He saw in a vision an angel of God who had just come in. <laughs> the angel of God who had just come in. You mean he was someplace else and he came in from out the outside. It's very interesting, isn't it? And said to him, Cornelius. And he fixing his gaze on him and being much alarmed, he said, what is it, Lord? And he said to him, your prayers, and look what else it says, Amen. your alms. Now, I understand, obviously, alms is a reference to giving in particular to the poor. But I am going to use this in a broader sense, and I think that it's okay to do so. It's not technically accurate, but in the spirit, it is totally accurate. And I'm going to shift the word alms to the word finances, because alms are finances. So listen to this now. And he said to him, your prayers and your finances, your giving, your giving, your prayers and your giving have ascended. Your prayers and your giving have ascended. Uh, folks, I mean, this is absolutely, for me, this is astounding revelation in the Word of God. Your prayers. Now, we understand your prayers. We understand your worship. But look at this. And, and your giving. It ascends. It isn't, just, it isn't just horizontal. It says it ascends. As a memorial before God. The, God, the alms, the giving, God's heart for the poor, God's heart for the Jewish people, God's heart for Jerusalem, God's heart, God's heart, God's heart. And out of sacrifice and out of the overflow of an abundant heart of thanksgiving, this devout man who feared God would pray and also worship God with these finances. And it says, and they arose and it ascended as a memorial before God. Now dispatch them into Joppa and send to a man named Simon, etc. Now, verse 7. When the angel who was speaking to him had left, that means angels are released on assignment, and when the assignment is done, they depart to go get another assignment. He summoned two of his servants and a devout soldier of those of his personal attendants. And after he had explained everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. Let's go on down to verse 11. And so he becomes hangry, verse 10. He goes up and, and he fell into a trance. The end of verse 10. He fell into a trance, verse 11. And in this trance, he says, and he saw. Say, and he saw. How many of you want to see yes. dreams, visions, trances? It says, and he saw in a vision, he has a trance. And it says this, and he saw the sky opened. He saw the sky opened up. If it had to open up, it meant it was previously closed, at least to Cornelius. I didn't say it was closed to everyone. But it said it opened up. And if it opened up, that means it previously was closed. 
that his prayers and his giving arose, it ascended as a memorial before God, and it spoke before the throne of Almighty God. God then responds to Cornelius' sacrifices and the overflow of his heart. He takes it, and Cornelius goes to a rooftop. He go, falls into a trance state, and he has a vision, and God speaks to him, and he says, Watch this. It's absolutely profound. It is absolutely. I love this so much. And when he became hungry, oh, that's good. Okay. He fell into a trance. He saw the sky opened up, verse 11, and an object like a great sheet coming down, towered by four corners, comes down. The whole experience. And the experience in the open heavens that Cornelius and then Peter, by invitation, partakes of is the following. The gospel, the apostolic gospel of the kingdom being extended to the Gentiles, not just the Jewish people. This happens in a trance. This happened in a seer realm. This happened with discernment. But it was a response to what? Prayer and giving ascended and God responded with an open heaven. And in that open heaven, there was a release of the commission of the apostolic gospel to a people who had previously not heard. Did you know that your giving is a key to open heavens? Our giving arises and I am asking for the offering this evening to be sowed in faith for your open heaven. Amen. You can seed into an open heaven. I'm not giving you manipulation. I'm giving you Bible. The prayers and the alms ascended as a memorial to God. And so I don't know all the technical here, and so I'm going to let your pastor here give you uh, that and then we'll continue on then with our giving great there are giving envelopes in the seat pocket in front of you if you would complete them and fill them out please you can give by cash or check made out to life center uh, credit card if you do use a credit card please um, uh, be sure and fill out all of the information including the cvv and the expiration date uh, you can text to uh, Life Center GA at 77977. That's especially good for you, those of you online. Uh, you will receive a link to uh, PushPay, and then that will uh, link you to give. Uh, there is a giving kiosk in the back. Uh, you can use the Life Center app. So there are many ways that you can give. Uh, but if you will fill out that envelope, and uh, we will receive the evening offering. Thank you, Lord. Praise and worship team. We're going to pray over the offering as the ushers are receiving it. Father, we thank you for your generosity, and we thank you, God, that even as the revelation has come about our giving and opening the heavens, Father, I pray that that revelation would go deep within us. You would open up the heavens over every person who gives and those that have a heart to give. Father, we just ask that you would pour down upon us all that you have for us over these next days. And we receive it now. We thank you that you are good and that your heart prevails over all that we are. Lord, we thank you and we bless you. And we dedicate this, this giving to your kingdom's sake, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen.
let's stand up uh, again and I'll kick into another gear and really go to the word now. Father, thank you for Life Center in the name of Jesus. And um, there was a young man that was right over here uh, a little while ago. Is he still around? He was right here taking pictures. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Zion. Right. There you are, dude. Come here. Awesome. Jonathan, come on. Yeah. Just turn around. You know, let everybody see your cute face. And they already probably know who you are. But like, uh, you know the Lord highlights people. You know? And I want to give you one of my guidelines. While there is the place of prophesying on everybody one by one, I function a little different. I look for what I call fountains to help open up. And then I believe that when that fountain gets opened up, that fragrance, that aroma, that water of the Spirit can flow all over the place. And then what's for one can be for the many. It's just another way of doing it. And so I felt the Holy Spirit highlighted this young man to me this evening. And so I'm going to have Jonathan actually start. And he's a seer prophet from Kentucky, and we're buddies. Okay, so Jonathan, I want you to just uh, start. Zion, can you come here? First of all, I honor Apostle and Prophet of the House. Can you just lift your hands? Is that okay? Immediately when you stood here, I saw a bridge above your head, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, Zion, the bridge builder. And he said, I will cause your dreams and aspiration to bridge gaps. I will cause it to bridge gaps between old and young. I will cause it to bridge gaps between economical and sociological uh, 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 gaps. I'm going to, I'm causing you and I'm placing a mantle around you, a purpose and a destiny upon you that will fill the gaps, to build the bridges, to fill the cracks. Zion, my bridge builder, says the Lord. And today I release to you the aspirations of your heart. And yes, the Lord says, even you will go to, to I, I literally saw uh, colleges like Harvard and Yale begin to open up in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord said, you will go to the college of your choice and I will open up academias all around you. And you they will say, will you come here? And will you come here? And the Lord says, you will go where you aspire to go. And I will put you around people, men and women of God great influence all the days of your life the Lord said because your heart is pure before me and because you have fixed your eyes upon me there will be no end to what you aspire in your heart that I will not do for you says the spirit of the living God now um, I need another person I don't know where they went it was a gentleman that was the second here, maybe kind of a, a, excuse me, a little older, but not as old as me, okay? That a singer, can we get him? I need him, Elton? I need, I need Elton. Elder, I think he's Elton. I need Elder James. Can you come back please? Okay, and there's a reason, okay? And I know that this is, okay, hi dude, hi. Is, they say your name is Elder. I think your name is Elton. Okay. James Edward. Well, you got a good name, buddy. So do you know Zion? You don't? Well, you guys just shake hands or something. I mean, you know, okay? So I want you to actually to turn around out towards them. It's just a little bit different way. Okay. Jonathan, come back. Okay. I felt the Holy Spirit was highlighting this young guy and I felt the Holy Spirit was highlighting this man doesn't mean he's not highlighting you okay because I'm presenting before you a picture of a part of the calling that is upon this present house there can be almost as it were many different stages of a life of a ministry in a church and there comes times of the passing of the baton while still maintaining the culture of honor, then there also becomes the empowering of that next generation. And in this generation, 
the Lord is looking for people and places where there'll be three generations joined together in a generation. Where it becomes the wisdom of the older, the resources of the middle, and the zeal of the young. And they run together, and it's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Three generations in a generation. When you actually study historic revivals, it is not just about that one generation. Historic moves of the Spirit are invitations for the joining of the generations. And as I have not been here for a while, and even ministered in Atlanta, but this is my first time back for a while, but I just want to confirm for you something you already know, but something that I see that is now happening. It is the joining of the generations for such a time as this. Where there's not competition, but there is divine cooperation. And to where, though you don't know him, you become his cheerleader. And though you might not know him yet, you can walk in a culture of honor and you can be built upon his shoulders because we're to carry the next generation. And you kind sir, with your artistry and your management, the two different things are brought together like in an equal mix in your life. Managerial capacity of structure and order, though brought together with the artistic, you know, blend of the singer and, and the, the desire. It's almost like a, a color of the wind, okay? A Disney song. But you have the desire to create something that's not been created. You have the desire to see and to be a part and bless the culture that is. But there's something that's inside of you that's like, that's awesome, but my generation sees it this way. And that's right too. If it is still all kept, not independent, but joined together, then God will release even a higher realm of revelation than if it were that you were only building by yourself. The gifts are there, the gifts are there. But if you try to do this just yourself, it'll be capped. And if you try to do everything that's still on your plate to do, it'll be a little capped because God's prophecies, God's word is over always, if it's a true word, it's always bigger than ourselves. So that it requires us to become equippers in the joining of the generations because two are better than one. And if one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000. And I use this as a picture tonight about a destiny on this house and upon the city, the great city of Atlanta. That this is a house and this is a city that is called to model the joining of the generations. And it's called to be, to create I know that this, I know I'm gonna talk big prophetically right now. And let's listen to create the holy wood of the East Coast. Where God could release creative entrepreneurship with a Joseph's coat of multi collars to a people and to a city. And so two that the Lord highlighted for me are in the arts with a calling to media because it is a Joseph's coat of many colors, many colors, 
that the Lord is weaving together and it is the joining of the generations for such a time as this. Amen. Awesome. Thank you. You can have a seat. It was so funny because during I saw angels being released from heaven and all I can do is explain it looked like a spiritual firmament a blanket was covering this house and it was a covering of many colors and they, it stretched and I, And I have given you a mother named Mary. And I have also opened now in the realm of the spirit, the gate to South America. And where they know a mother Mary, this mother Mary that I have given this house's voice shall unlock South America, says the spirit of the living God. For I have put fire in her mouth, says God, and I shall cause her voice to trumpet, 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 trumpet across South America and fire shall be released. Whoa. Okay. Huh. Um, may I speak over you? Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Uh, prophetess. <laughs> um, because while you're in the back room, I so, yes, huh? Okay. Catherine. Okay. Um, but I I saw written over you a book cover. And on this book cover said Sidewalk Prophets. And the Lord said one of the callings and natures of this house. It will be known for sidewalk prophets. And I saw, oh gosh, I'm in the, okay. So I am seeing, and I'm seeing prophets being dispersed throughout the city, releasing the word of the Lord on the street. Miracle signs and wonders happening on the street. And as they're being released, it's all, I just keep seeing sidewalk prophets. As the prophets are released on the sidewalks, so shall the glory be released. I saw a promise 30 years old over this house. And there is a glory swelling that is transpiring in the realm of the spirit over this house that will cause a, a major release of revival in this city as the sidewalk prophets are dispersed in Atlanta. And I'm doing a shift. You have been focused. And I've taken you th through stages, but I now bring you into the shift. And the shift is being equipped in the house to be sent out from the house. And I'm going to shift you, hold on, from being an any to being an Audi. to where we're a little, get a little ingrown, that he wants to turn it around out to the side, to the edge, to walk out the prophetic, to walk it out side. You have done well of walking it inside. You have done well of walking it in family. You have done well at walking it out in the house. But in this season, because God has the harvest on his mind, there is a shift that is happening from the inside out. So that is why you are having equipping schools not just conferences 
because it is about equipping and empowering for this reason of sending for the prophet to be in the house is right but for the prophet to stay in the house creates frustration so I want to use you as a model of being able to turn from the inside out because God has the harvest on his mind. Amen? Amen. Bless you. Yeah, bless you. I want you to turn, if you have your Bible, turn to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. And I'm going to begin to share with you some about the discerner, and I will carry on with that then tomorrow. The discerner. I'm going to give you one verse, and I'm going to try to really develop this one verse. Hebrews 5.14, and we might use you guys at the end, okay? Thank you. In fact, I actually really love this. I mean, it's just like, I'm just ready to like forget all of this. It's just like, I just want to sing, okay? It's like, can I just like sing? Okay, right. Maybe that's later, okay? Hebrews 5.14, but solid food, say solid food, solid food. is for the mature. for the mature. Say, I'm mature. I can choose solid food. Solid now, I don't hear anybody over on this side at all. <laughs> so maybe these, this is the only side that's hungry tonight. Solid food, solid food. Is, for is for the mature. Who because of practice? Because of practice. Come on, stay with me. Don't you do a siesta now. Who because of practice? Who because of practice? Have their senses, have their senses trained. trained? Who have their senses, have their senses trained? trained? To discern. To discern. To discern. To discern. I'm, a I'm a discerner. You are a discerner. You are a discerner. Yes. To, discern. to discern good and evil. Good. Now, I want you to take your bony prophetic finger and point your gun at someone. At someone. This is your prophet gun. You know that, don't you? This is the prophet. And I want you to tell them, you are a discerner. You are a discerner. And your senses, and your senses will, be will be surrendered and anointed. And, anointed. and you will discern. And you will discern. Good. In Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. Amen. Yo. Now, solid food, first of all, solid food. Solid food, and if you read earlier and then later in the book of Hebrews, it talks about children, infants. It used the word babes. Yo. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. oh I'm going to get thrown out before I get started. The Bible talks about babes. Oh, my Jesus, it's actually in there. It is. It's in the Bible. It's in there. I can take you to it. It's in Hebrews chapter 6. Okay. Anyway. Solid food, though, is not for babes. Solid food is for the mature. And the way you eat and the way you drink is not the same. And an infant drinks. But a mature man, a true mature woman in Christ, choose their food. Solid food is for the mature. You chew it. You chew it. You're given a steak, and you don't just swallow it. You have to chew it. That is actually a form of Christian meditation. When in the book of Joshua, it says that to meditate upon this word, that is to mutter. It is to repeat it over and over and over and over and over and over again. It's, it's Holy Ghost self-talk. And you're repeating it. You're muttering it. You're saying it. And you're chewing it. You are chewing the word. Anybody here love to chew the word? It sounds like stuff in the Bible to me. Like Jeremiah, eat this roll. Yo. Yeah, especially if it's a chocolate Danish. No, you yeah, okay. Solid food is for the mature. Who because of a perfect start? 
Who? Because of practice. So we are supposed to, this is elementary, but we're going to go somewhere. Who? Because of practice. We are supposed to have practice sessions. This is supposed to be a clinic, a safe house, a safe place where you can practice. Now, too many churches and ministries and people are not safe. And so, therefore, they end up ceasing the operation of the gifts because, eh, no, they don't, it's not, it, okay. but that's not this house. It says solid food is for the mature. Who? Because of practice. And so we are supposed to individually create a culture in our family. We're to create a culture in our ministries. We're to create a culture in our church. We're to create then a culture in whatever one of the societal cultural mountains that we called to, to create a culture where Perfection is not the goal. Uh, did you hear me? Practice is the goal. It's through the sweat of practice. A guy does not become, or a woman, does not become a pro athlete, an Olympian, like the Olympics that were held here in Atlanta many years ago. You don't achieve to that just because, oh, Oh, Jesus, have mercy on me. Just because you got a gift. You got to work it. Uh, this is really elementary right now, but you have to work it. It's called practice sessions. Now, watch this with me, okay? Solid food is for the mature. Who because of? Practice. Who because of? Practice. Come on, who because of? Practice. Okay then it's proper and right to have practice sessions, is it not? Yes. It's proper and right to have them in your own home. Yes. It's proper and right to do them in maybe in your car, maybe. Yes. <laughs> and it's definitely right to do them in an equipping center. By the way, years ago I had a dream about twins. And in this, when the twins were born in the dream, I was told their names and they were healing rooms and the house of prayer. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me about 15 years or so ago, and he said, everywhere the healing rooms go, there's to be the house of prayer. And everywhere there's the house of prayer, there's to be the healing rooms. Okay, and that word has been carried around the world. But recently, I saw triplets. And I saw triplets being born for the body of Christ. It's very simple, but it was a vision. And I saw triplets, and that they were given titles, names, functions to me. And it was triplets. Again, the healing rooms, the house of worship and prayer, and then it was this third element being added now in this decade, in this period of time. Equipping centers. Amen. Equipping centers. It's now an hour of the triplet where every place there's healing rooms, there's a house of worship and prayer, and out of the house of worship and prayer, there is an equipping center. I think that is a good description of what, in part, a local church is supposed to be. We are to be a house of prayer, moving in the gifts and the power, and we are to be a safe place where people can practice and get equipped to be turned from the inside out to impact the world. Solid food is for the mature, who because of practice have their senses. Sometimes I wish that there was a spiritual gift called common sense. <laughs> There's not. <laughs> so that's not what that's talking about. <laughs> Solid food is for the mature, who because of practice have their senses trained. Who, because of practice, train their senses. So what's it talking about? What senses is it? In the natural, remember, there's the five different pictures that Paul the Apostle talks about, that we're a body, we're a temple, we're a bride, we're the army, you know, the, these different pictures. Well, let's just use the one that we're a body. We're the body of Christ with many members. 
Solid food is for the mature, who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. So we're to have houses of worship and prayer, like the wonderful present saturated worship here this evening, that helps release the culture where all things are possible, and then there is practice sessions where we get equipped to be turned again from the inside out. Who have their senses trained, their senses, their senses. So in the natural body, there's what's called five natural senses. So I have a microphone, you do not. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, so what's one of the five natural senses? Taste, sight, I'm going hearing. To, I'm going to, I have the mic. I'm going to give it to people. Okay, all right. What is one? One, one. Eyes. Eyes. So what's that? Seeing. Sight. Sight. Okay, sir, what's another one of the five natural senses? Smell. Smell. <laughs> okay, sight, smell. What's another one, dear? Taste. Taste. Oh, yo. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is bad oh good discerning good and evil we're going to discern good you will not be able to truly discern what's evil unless you really know what's good it's a big issue now okay five senses sight smell taste what's another one touch touch come on yo what's your name Joyce, I love it. Okay, so I speak into this over you in the name of Jesus. And there are those who are called a seer, but there are those who are also called burden bearers. And they feel the burden of the Lord. And they are like a Holy Ghost donkey that carried Jesus into Jerusalem for his divine appointment. So God comes and sits on people and in the feeler realm, they feel the burden of the Lord and then they carry that to the designated place called the throne of God. They offload the burden in behalf of another and they have just practiced their senses. And you are a feeler. You feel things. And it's, this one is a little bit difficult to navigate because whose feelings am I feeling? Am I, is this these mine? Is this my spouse's? Is it my kids? Is it the spiritual atmosphere? Is it my pastor? Is it the waitress that just walked by? And when you learn to practice your sense of touch, that is actually a feeler realm that can be anointed in the Holy Spirit when we surrender it. So, you said sight. You said smell. You said taste. You said touch. And there's one more of the five senses. What is it? Hearing. Here, okay, what is it? Hearing. Hearing? Hearing? Earrings? <laughs> Hearing, listen. Okay, I have done a poll, uh, a survey across the world, and I've asked people, what is the ministry of the Holy Spirit? So I'm just going to do it. Let's do it real fast. Because I know you, this is elementary, but we're going somewhere. So tell me, give me some descriptions. What does the Holy Spirit do? What's he do? Teach. He's a teacher. He's what? I heard something there. Yeah, you did. Who was it? Guides us. Yeah, say it. Come on. Guides us. He what? He guides us. Good one. Revealer. Re revealer. <laughs> Listens. Okay, bam. You know, that is the first time in me doing a survey of that nature that anyone has ever given that answer. Because they will say, biblically correct, he convicts, he guides, he leads, he comforts, he builds us up, he gives gifts. But I want to tell you one of the first things that the Holy Spirit does, one of the primary things he does, he listens. 
He listens to the conversations between the Father and the Son because Jesus said about the Holy Spirit that when the Comforter comes, the paraclete, the one called alongside to help, that he will not speak on his own initiative, but he will only speak that which he hears in the conversation of the courtroom of heaven between the Father and the Son, and one of the primary ministries of the Holy Spirit is? Listening, listening. hearing. Listening. How many of you want to grow in your sense of hearing? Natural, spiritual. So here's a little how it works. Now, that's five, right? You did a great job. We did sight, we did smell, we did taste, we did touch, we did hearing. That is five. I actually say that I believe that there are six senses. The sixth is knowing. They're divine knowings. They're just, they're knowings. It deals with surrendering your mind and you receive the thoughts of God. In the touch, you refill the emotions of God. In your eye, you receive the visions of God. In your hearing, you hear, you get the voice of God. In your sniffer, you get discernment. And in your taste, you get, you get to like, you, you get to, you get to like eat appetizers and you get to like, you serve a full meal. You get to taste and see that the Lord is good. Solid food is for the mature who, because of practice, have their senses trained to discern. Senses trained. Now they're going to be trained to do something. Not just run loose and run our life. Like some immature Christians do with feelings. Feelings. (laughs) Nothing more but feelings. I don't feel led today. I feel led to stay in bed today. I feel led to like go in a hole and not come out today. I bought I covers. I like you. Uh, and one of the tricks is obviously is that the devil speaks in first person. And he speaks I. And he says things like this. I feel bad. And we listen to it. We listen to it. But when you take practice sessions, you learn to discern what's good and what's evil. But one of the tricks of the enemy is, he has a couple of them, a few, and he speaks in first person. So he says, I feel bad. And you hear that and you think that's about you. And it's not, it's about himself. Because he's so egotistic, he's always talking about himself. He really isn't talking about you. It's just a trick. And he says, I feel bad. He goes, yeah, I feel bad. I feel left out. Yeah, I feel left out. I don't feel like going to church today. (laughs) Yeah, I don't feel like going to church. In fact, I feel forgotten. Yeah, I'm forgotten. They won't miss me. Oh. I just as well not go. I feel rejected. I don't feel like there's really truly a function and a place for me. And he's talking about himself the whole time. It's one of the most subtle deceptive tricks. He talks about himself, he speaks in first person and we swallow it. Because when our senses are not trained to discern good and evil, we go by whatever thought comes. And we've gotta learn to catch the little foxes that spoil the vine, right? Dude, there is this dude. I I do have a culture of honor. I'm just in a little bit of slang for some reason this evening, okay? So please excuse me if that's offensive. But sir, okay, not dude, okay? (laughs) Sir, elder sir. (laughs) Yes, okay. There is such a practical spirit of wisdom that rests upon your life. And you release a shadow of Christ that gets cast two generations after you. And if Jesus tarries and you remain in strength, it will touch three generations after you. Of the shadow of the Almighty, and it is in part a spirit of wisdom. Now, are you two familiar with one another? (laughs) Uh, They both rolled their eyes, so. 
that means something. Okay. So the Lord has a um, jubilee in his mind. And he wants you to relearn how to celebrate. Because there's a jubilee that God has in his mind for you. And he wants to honor you. And it's just like, I don't know that it's a cruise, but there is something that the Lord just wants you to go do together to just enjoy life. And it's almost like having a jubilee, like being married for like 50 years or something. And there's something to that nature. And, and the Lord wants to just bless you so much because of your faithfulness. You have kept your hand to the plow. You have not looked over your shoulder, though you could have, and you have cried many tears. You have wanted at one point in time in your life to sing an old song, Cry Me a River, but the Lord has shifted it from Cry Me a River to Bring Me a River. Make Me a River. And so I just hear different things out of different points in time in your life but now you are postured before the Lord for a new river to come forth. The Lord just wants to really reward you and honor you, and I feel, and I see. And then as I kick into one sense, and my strongest is actually feeling, though I'm known as a seer. I wrote the book, The Seer, Dream Language, etc. But... My feeler realm for me, the touch, the emotion, sanctified unto God, that's actually my stronger suit. And then when I enter into the, my a place of strength, the other senses become more illuminated or animated. <laughs> you light up my life. You give me hope to carry on. And it's a spirit of wisdom, and it'll be cast to two, and even if the Lord wills, and you to three generations in Jesus' name. Amen. Solid food is for the mature, who because of practice have their senses trained to discern. To discern. They don't only have their senses trained to be sharp. They have their senses trained to do a task. It's to discern. What does that mean? The word discern means to distinguish, perceive, differentiate. So a person who moves in discernment can actually perceive the motivating spirit that is behind a certain manifestation. So somebody might get the jerks. I'm just going to lay it out there, and it might be truly the Holy Ghost. And somebody else might be the jerks, and it's the Tourette's. <laughs> <laughs> and we're trying to bring it's chemical. My gosh, folks. And so, I'm sorry. And then sometimes it's not, and it might be a manifestation of a attention-getting spirit, and that person is simply trying to draw attention to themselves, so they're actually mimicking something that someone else is doing so that they might look like they got more anointing than the other person. I mean, that doesn't happen in church at all, does it? Huh? Never. never. No, no, okay. Liar, liar, pants off, liar. Okay. Solid food is for the mature who, because of practice, practice, have their senses, what? Senses what? I told you I was giving you one verse. Senses trained to do what? Discern. Discern. What do you do vocationally? Right here. No, you know what you do. What do you do? I work with my hands. You work with your hands? So I just speak. There's an entrepreneur like Grace that's here on this house. There was a Derek guy that picked us up, you know, at the airport, and, and, and uh, Jonathan and I just started, you know, speaking over that dear man, there you are, because he, he's got this. Uh, John, uh, uh, Derek, I actually want you to stand up, because I actually want to prophesy over you. I declare over you that God is going to give you a millionaire club. He's going to teach you 
how to raise up social entrepreneurs who will start micro businesses and there will be a multiplication anointing that comes upon you after this night now in the name of Jesus from this night on and it is and as soon as I met you I had come to me multiplication anointing but then there you can share it and then you can release it and so I release this multiplication word over you because the Lord has put in your heart as a Joseph to help raise up your own realm of a Joseph type company where you are going to raise up business entrepreneurs and there will be a chain reaction that will happen because as you are blessed, you are going to release the blessing onto others and there will be a multiplication effect, a multiplication anointing because what's in your heart is not just for you you're four and no more and as I know there's five six seven uh, you know but 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 I just say it's not just you and for your house but it will be for your house because the Lord is going is put that spirit adoption upon your life and upon your heart and there will be where you will even help raise up uh, businesses to pass on to children and eventually to children's children but it isn't only going to be for a family lineage it's going to also be for in the house in the house, in the house, because one of the primary things that the Lord speaks to you about is family. It is family, it is family, it is family. To some, he speaks about the temple. For some, he speaks about the army. For some, he talks to them about the bride of Christ. For some, he talks to them about the building. But with you, he talks to you about the family. He relates to you as a family God, because he is a family God. And God looked for an Abraham, because God, when he found Abraham, it says about Abraham, when he found him, he says, he knew that he would command his children after him. And I declare over you that even though there might have been some breakage and there might have been some gulfs and some gaps that happened in the past, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a bridge building anointing in the name of Jesus. And I just declare there is a multiplication anointing and you will help raise up entrepreneurs by starting your own eventually millionaire club in Jesus name. Now, how many want in on that word? Remember I said, I look for fountains to open up. Well, so one just got opened up. Who would like to have a multiplication anointing? Your hunger is the length of your reach to God. I know that's not all of the issue, but it's part of the key. And so we reach up. And, but we also receive what's coming down. I declare, you know what? You just need to stand to your feet right now. This is ministry time already right now. In the name of Jesus, I declare there is a multiplication anointing that's being released right now in the name of Jesus. It is coming down, it's coming down, it's coming down, it's coming down. In fact, I want you right now to close your natural eyes because God is going to open up your spiritual eyes. And you can start, that would be... Freaking awesome, okay? Thank you, Lord. There are presents coming down. Presents are coming down. Presents of his presence. Packages of grace. Many, many, many years ago, when I had hair, and it was long, and it was swag. <laughs> and I loved to shake it like Kim Clement. When I was young, I was awakened five nights in a row to go out in my living room and sit. And the first night, a package came down from heaven, set in my lap. And I was told to unwrap it. For five nights, I was awakened at 2 a.m. to go out into my living room. And five nights in a row, presents came down. And I see your realm in a sanctified imagination, perhaps, but in a visionary manner. And they came down. Right now, I see gifts coming down that you cannot earn. 
because he's a good, good father. And right now he wants us to taste and see his goodness. His goodness. There's presents coming down, coming down, coming down. Presence coming down all around, all around. Tell me what you see, tell me what you feel, tell me what you hear. Tell me what you smell, tell me what you taste, tell me how you feel. Presence coming down, coming down, coming down, coming all around. As the dew comes in the morning, as the grass glistens in the sun, it's saying it's a new day, it's a new start, and everything will be And when you go out at night and you take a stroll by yourself, do you have your chin on your chest and all you see is yourself? No. You lift your eyes to the hills to the sky. From when shall come your help? From when shall come your help? From when shall come your help? I'll lift my eyes unto the hills. I'll let my eyes be filled with dreams. Visions, revelations, promises. Count the stars. What? Count the stars. God told Abraham, Abram, to go out at night and count the stars. And you say, but that was him, and that was then, and this is now. But God says, but I'm the same God. And I will call you to count the stars. There's a promise. There's a promise. There's a promise too. Oh, I remember that promise. I forgot about that one. That word that was spoken to me 22 years ago. And I forgot it. But, oh, you didn't forget it. Because you're the one who spoke it. So, oh, oh, guess what? I could receive that one again, but I thought that that one was over. I thought that I had to put that one on the shelf because I missed it or it just didn't. You mean all things can be made new? You mean even broken things can be made new? You mean that even a heart that has been squashed, the feeler that no longer wants to feel, feel again? I want you to 
Look at your present I'm giving to you tonight Presents coming down, coming down all around And presents are being given to you tonight I want you to buy an act of faith Just have your hands laid out, open in front of you And I want you that there is a present that has just come down. For some of you, it's in red foil paper with a gold bow. For some of you, it's blue and it's gray. For some, silver, because it's promises in your silver years. And now, I want you to just take hold of the bow, as it were, and pull it. Take the wrap. Take, this is symbolic talk. We're going to untie it. We're going to unwrap the present. This is a spiritual exercise. This is its own form of an activation, folks. The only reason I went here is because I saw it. And when I saw that, I decided I'm going with what I saw. And now, here's what some of us have to do. We have to take the lid off. Because we have a lid on ourself. God does not live in a box. He did once in the Ark of Covenant. And once he got out, he's never going back in a box again. And so God does not live in a box. We do. And we sometimes have to take the lid off because we think too small. Think according to our generation. The Lord's challenging me to think internally. Can you? So right now, you've received a present. I'm cutting in and out. I'm not sure if there's something I'm you know, doing wrong okay, on sound. I don't know, okay? So maybe somebody can help me there. You've received a present. We untie it. We unwrap it. We take the lid off. Will you take the lid off, please? And now here's what you gotta do. Take your hand and reach down inside. Take your hand, thank you, and reach down by faith. It's a prophetic act. This is a prophetic conference. By faith, take your hand inside that box. It's a present. And get hold of your present. Get your present. For some of you, it's an old present made new. Somebody, there's like a broken toy and it's no longer broken because God's reaching back into your past and he's going to make that promise that was old new. There's a way, to, oh gosh, I don't, I'm going to do it, but I know it's kind of like dangerous, it's unsafe and but it's Holy Ghost. Excuse me, I'm, I'm discerning. There's a wedding ring in there. Someone, you took it off. Some people need to take them off. I've had to take mine off. But sometimes, I just, I just I'm not going to explain. There's a ring in there, and there's a promise for some of you, and there's a tag that's on this ring, and it says, Promise Keeper. God's going to reveal himself to you as the Promise Keeper. There's a tag that's on this ring, and it says, Promise Keeper. And God is going to touch the feelings of your sense of abandonment 
And you say, well, what's this got to do with the prophetic? A little bit of everything, because there are where we surrender our senses. Let me, you stay standing, stay in the spirit, and let me teach this to you a little. To whom we present the members of our body, they become a slave, Romans chapter 6. If we present them to sin, they become a slave to sin. But then there's the flip. If we present our members of our body, that could be our eyes, our ears, our taste, our touch, our feel, our no. And we present it to God, then it becomes a slave to righteousness or the doulos, the Greek word would be servant. So to whomever we present our senses, our members, they will become a slave. If you present them to sin, your eye gate will be a slave to your hearing because of abuse. Your heart, because it's broken, will stay in that condition. But as we surrender our senses in worship to the one who created them, he renews, he washes, he cleanses, he makes new. And then we dust off the debris of years. And then we represent our sight I normally teach this thoroughly, but this is the zone we're in tonight. And I just say, and we present our sight. And we present our sight. I want you to present the members of your body tonight. Which is a spiritual service of worship. And I want you to present your eyes tonight. And we ask the blood of Jesus to cleanse us from anything that we have looked on and any memories that are burned in there, we say, Holy Ghost, heal them. We bring every thought into captivity to obedience of Christ Jesus, but we bring our eyes. And we're asking, Holy Spirit, as we surrender our eyes, we're asking for the gifts of the Spirit to be layered upon and work within our eyes. Let prophecy come on our eyes. Let discerning of spirits come on our eyes. And on our hearing. See, you can do a healing on every one of your senses because one sense might be stronger and another sense has a hindrance because that sense has maybe been traumatized. And then you present it and it gets healed and it can be anointed because but what we don't want is anointing on, layered on just top, top of trauma. Because then it's confused signals. But when we bring healing and wholeness into every one of those five natural senses and even to the sixth of knowings, then it won't be a mixture because we have surrendered our senses to God. And then we welcome the gifts and the anointing and the power. And so I welcome right now tonight, see, in Jesus' name, you said sight. So I declare, declare over what you said you will have. I speak sight on your eyes. Natural, supernatural, supernatural, natural. You said smell. So I speak over you an increase of discerning of spirits and you will sniff out the devil. You will sniff out the devil. You will sniff out the devil. And you will see and feel and know the copycat from the real. And you will know, but you're going to sniff it out. I think you said taste. Did you say taste? I declare over you that you've tasted some bad things. But God is going to, by his blood, take an eraser to the chalkboard of life and he's going to erase some old tracks. And he presents you over here to a chalkboard that has not even been written on yet. And he gives you, <laughs> I'm talking, you know, this is a parable like a sidewalk prophet, he's giving you multicolored chalk to go out to the sidewalk 
and play hopscotch all over again. Because he wants to restore you to almost as it were a place of innocence that you have not known for years. For years. And he's going to restore you to a place of innocence where union is holy and union is not about being taken advantage of. God will restore your taste. And you're not going to make a mistake by tasting the bad. You're going to have good taste. And God, and you've learned a whole lot of lessons in the last five years. The last five years has been a transformation in your life. And by grace. God is showing up in your life and he's erasing old and he's giving you as a co-partner with him to create a new path. So I speak over you. He's going to let you taste and see that the Lord is good and he tastes like honey and he's sweet and it won't be a testimony of bittersweet but it will be transformed from bittersweet to pure sweet taste the sweetness of God in Jesus name sight smell taste touch I speak over the seat of our heart. Put your hand on your heart right now, of our emotions. And I know what it's like to feel squashed and kind of beat up a lot of things. And then I'm sure learning how to find my bounce back in Jesus. It's to believe that the best has not passed me by but the best is still in front because I am doing practice sessions. And even if, you know, I was given a dream look just, just about three weeks ago that's just captured me. My late wife appeared in the dream to me and she presents a book called to me called Finding Hope. And she says to me in the dream, I didn't say that she actually appeared. It's a symbolic representation. Some things that we need to be clear on that. But the Lord used that as a very familiar symbol to mean a lot to me. And my late wife appeared in a dream. She has a book called Hope. And I heard in the dream these words. The doors that you attempted to go through five years ago, but did not go through. I am bringing those doors back in front of you five years later. And it's important how you go through those doors because it's not just about you. It's a modeling I want to do through you for the sake of many. The reason I share that is because God in that dream, it's five years, grace, it's a whole lot to it to unpack, that he's bringing something back around to me that maybe I didn't enter into the fullness of five years ago, but in his goodness and for my heart's sake, I'm gonna give you a dream. I'm gonna take you to a dreamland. I'm gonna give you a dream. I will take you into a dreamland. I will restore to you all the years. I will take away from you all the And you will know, and you will know, 
and you will know, and you will know, and you will know, and you will know. Those are zones I go into, see? And there's doors of opportunity, and we can go through them, and we can wait, and there'll be another one that'll appear. And there's also, sometimes in the purposes of God, He offers it once, and out of His goodness, He even brings it back around again. And maybe we didn't fully go through before, because it actually wasn't the right timing, but he was giving us appetizers of things to come. Oh, really? Yeah, maybe. Uh-huh. It's very true. It's very true. It's very true. So, sight, smell, taste, touch. So I speak over every broken heart tonight that God heals the brokenhearted and he set at liberty those who are bruised. And so we welcome Holy Spirit right now, all around the room, to do heart surgery, heart mending. And see, you can have, there's four chambers to a heart, and you can have a bruising in one chamber, and the other three chambers are quite fine. You might have a cold heart in one chamber, and then a soft one in another. And so we present all four chambers of our heart to God. This is ministry time, folks, so please take this in because there's healing of senses and then there will be empowering of the senses and there's cleansing there's surrender there's cleansing and there's healing of our senses right now and I would like to speed this up but I can't huh. Huh. hey close your eyes again I feel you, I feel you, I feel you all around, oh, there's nothing like you. It's like the Holy Spirit is weaving a safe place. And some of you have been saying, I really need a safe place. God says, I'll be your safe place. And it's like he's weaving a chrysalis, a cocoon of love around you right now. Because you need to experience the Father's good, good heart. Solid food is for the mature. Who, because of practice, have their senses trained? So I'm just modeling, perhaps, how to get your senses healed and surrender and cleansed and healed and then empowered so that you too can discern good and evil. Uh, you keep going, buddy. Uh, uh, what key are you in? What? Can you go to like an E minor or something? I don't know why. Yep. Thank you. That's by feelers. It's some, I don't know why it's another tone. Let's see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I, I, see, I explain stuff. See, and then it's like, oh, that brought that bring, helps bring me to another place where I can stay on this. Oh, I can ship. When you wish upon a star When you wish upon a star I will tell you who you are When you wish upon a star I'll tell you who Take you on a journey. 
say, oh, it's been already such a long, long journey. I don't know if I can take another turn in the journey. But I saw you wishing on a star tonight. I kept looking over at you, and, I, and then the Holy Spirit kept having me see you as a little girl, as a little girl, as a little girl with no cares in the world. You were pure, you were simple, you were virgin, you were lovely, and no care in the world. He's going to return. He's going to return you to being like a little child. He's going to restore awe and wonder to people tonight. Restore awe and wonder to people tonight. And He's going to let you know, even through your senses, that you can trust God again. Because I see you. Starlight, star bright. First star I see tonight, I pray I might, I pray I will be a delight to you this night. I'm gonna take you into a dreamland. I'm going to take you into a dreamland. I'm going to take you into a dreamland. I'm going to take you into a dreamland, a dreamland, a dreamland, a dreamland. Dream and there's going to be not just dream girls. <laughs> there's going to be dream boys, and dream girls, and dream men, and dream women. going to learn to go out at nine and you're going to point up at the stars and you're going to say starlight star bright you are my promise tonight yes I am the righteousness of God in Christ yes I am the head and I'm not the tail yes I Y'all got a gift. Did you forget? Put your hand. <laughs> Put your hand. Put your hand in the box. And now by faith and an act, take it out. And there's a gift tonight, especially designed with you in mind. And it will be used to illuminate at least one of your senses beyond what you've ever known. Yeah. See, there's the gift of prophecy. There's the ministry of prophecy. There's the office of a prophet. There is also a prophetic spirit. And that is also can be a cultural atmosphere. And we have such a presence here tonight. And you can hear God for yourself. What is the present, the gift that he has given you tonight? Tell him. Thank him. Thank him for the gift that he gave tonight. 
Thank him for the gift he gave tonight. There is a higher realm. We'll go into some of this tomorrow. I surrender all, all to Jesus, I surrender. Here is a prayer to close with this evening. Father, in Jesus' great name, we present our entire beings to you as an act of worship and obedience. And we surrender our five senses to you now. Our sight, our hearing, our smell, our taste, our touch, and our knowing too. Holy Spirit, release your life-giving presence upon me, upon us, in a fresh manner. Here we are, Lord, all that we are and all that we hope to be. We surrender our senses as instruments of righteousness for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen and amen. Let's just give the Lord praise. I'm asking Jonathan to close. I'm going to prepare to go out to the book table to meet some of you there and sign some books. I'll be back with you in the morning at what time? At 9.30, is it? What? 9.30 or whatever, and then I'll do a part two tomorrow, okay? And I'm just gonna see if Jonathan has something else in his cooker, okay? All right? There you go. Is there eight minutes until this segment's over? Can we honor uh, Prophet James is up? Can we do that? Yeah, there you go. There's a prophet's reward in this house right now. Um, I was actually coming to get his books. I love serving my Papa and the Lord. Amen? Um, and you never out, ever outgrow servanthood because we never graduate the things Jesus never graduated. But as I was sitting there, I heard the Spirit of the Lord talk to me. And he spoke to me. He said, this will be the city that shakes. This will be the city that city that quakes. And I saw a Quaker anointing touching Atlanta. But it came by affirmation and confirmation of an earthquake. And God said, this will be a city that shakes. This will be a city that quakes. This will be a city that shakes. And there shall be a movement that shakes the nation that comes from the city of Atlanta. So, Father, we release the shaking anointing, shifting anointing, quaking anointing over Atlanta in the name of Jesus. We lose angels of glory and angels of revival. We lose angels that steward your presence, angels that worship God. And, Father, I thank you for a people right now that as we come into agreement that we say the bomb of Gilead shall be loose to the nations from this place. And Father, I loose the breaker anointing to break up follow ground, hard ground. And we say it shall be cultivated for the harvest is not coming. The harvest is here. The harvest is here. The harvest is here. And I am releasing a miracle anointing in this room right now. And I'm commanding a right ear. There is a person with a right ear. God is opening your ear now in the name of Jesus. I command your right ear. Open now. Open now. Open now. Open now. Open now. Open now. If that was you and your right ears messed up, can I just pray for you really quick? And I'm handing this over two minutes. That's the word of knowledge I just had. Come here. Can you hear it all? Fire. There it goes, there it goes. Can you hear it all? You can't hear it all? In your right ear? I want you to close your left ear. Can you put your hand on top of his hand? But come here, sir. We'll use three hands. I want to make sure.
we command in the name of Jesus for this eardrum to be made new right now. I literally felt a piercing coming through here. So Father, we thank you that right now in the name of Jesus, there we go. Thank you, Jesus. This is very different tonight, wasn't it? Wouldn't it be wonderful if you could come to a prophetic meeting and, uh, and just have a musical uh, that, that would just be prophetic all the yes. way through? Yes. We think so too, don't we, Elder James? He does, he thinks that. Yes, amen. 
but it couldn't be done without the musicians. So we appreciate you, we, we value you, but more than that, it's part of a team of the prophetic anointing in this house. And I just, just couldn't let it go by without calling attention to the Davidic uh, instrumentationalist. And Mario, you, you just, I believe you came to a different, whole different level prophetically tonight. That was great. All of you, you were great. Bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Uh, could Barbara Hopkins from Vertical Christian come forward? Barbara, are you here? Barbara Hopkins from Vertical Christian. We'll give her just a moment to come forward. And um, I just want to make a couple of quick announcements. Of course, the service starts at 9.30 tomorrow morning. Dr. San, I'm, I'm sorry, Dr. James Gall will be our speaker in the morning, and he'll continue. Uh, for those of you who are here and you may not have registered, or this may have been your first night, uh, our registration table, if you'd like to attend tomorrow, uh, is open for 30 minutes uh, after the close of the service, as will be the speaker's tables and um, uh, the table to order CDs. So if you'd like to get a set, a complete set of the CDs, you must place your order by noon tomorrow so that you can pick it up by the end of the service tomorrow night. So there are order forms out there on the registration table. This has been a great night, hasn't it? There's such a wonderful flow of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to pray and be dismissed. Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you, Father, that you touch not only those of us here, but those watching across the nations. And Lord, we thank you that as we presented ourselves to you, that there is a new equipping, a new upgrade that has occurred in our spiritual senses. So Father, tonight I pray for dreams and visions. I pray, God, that you would uh, just reveal those things that you desire to show us even tonight. And Lord, we pray for protection over every person as they leave and let them uh, sleep sweet and awaken with joy, ready to receive again from you tomorrow. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Welcome back to TLC Live, hosting in Vision Conference 2019. Dreamers, seers, and discerners, I tell you, we were blessed by the ministry of Dr. James Gall tonight. What an amazing time in the presence of the Lord. Miracles going forth. I mean, wow, it was an awesome time to be in the presence of the Lord. We have so much more for you. You know, we had Dr. Gall just now tonight. Before that, we had uh, Prophet Pat Fraley who did the noon session, and then Apostle Jane Hammond who did the Tuesday night and Wednesday morning session. Now we're moving forward. We have two more full days and you still can get in on it. So we have on Thursday morning, Dr. James Gall will be back with us. You don't want to miss it. And the only way you can get in on that is if you register online to watch us online. The day sessions, you must be registered. So you can go to our website, lifecenter.org, and register online to be a part of the morning and noon sessions. In the morning, we have another teaching by Dr. James Gall, and then we have a noon teaching by Dr. Hope Edie, the seer. You don't want to miss that. And then on Thursday night, Tomorrow night, we have Dr. Sandy Freed. She will be with us on tomorrow night, and then she'll be back on Friday morning uh, for the morning session. And then in the noon, our very own 
uh, Prophet Catherine Sykes, who's the Director of Ministry here at the Life Center, then she will be here uh, for the noon session. And also we will have Dr. Sandy Freed back with us on Friday night. So Dr. Sandy Freed will be with us three times. Three times. So we are expecting a mighty move of God during that time with us. So listen, don't forget, go to lifecenter.org, register, continue to watch us. You can watch us right back here tomorrow if you register online for the AM noon sessions and tomorrow night free and same on Friday. So we just want you to get in on these last two days of the conference, Envision Conference 2019, Dreamers, Seers, and Discerners. And just know this is practical teaching. So you want to be a part of it. You want to be in on this. So we welcome you to continue to watching and we're are so thankful for you on behalf of our senior leader and co-founder apostle buddy crumb and our founder dr mary crumb thank you so much for watching and thank you for being a part of the life center family online god bless you